Super Mario, Spyro the Dragon, Crash Bandicoot, Solid Snake. These are all iconic characters that have launched wildly successful franchises off the backs of their cool and instantly recognisable names. Imagine how different things would have been if Snake was called something like Jerry, or Mario was called Jumpman. Makes me shudder just thinking about it. The general rule of thumb in video games is that your lead character should have a name. However, rules are made to be broken, and so not every protagonist has a moniker of their very own, and some are instead known by a more generalised term. For this list, we're taking a look into gaming history in order to find the very best nameless leading lads, ladies or others. Best is obviously quite subjective, but we've picked these based on the popularity of their respective games and how enjoyable it is to play as them. Also, we've tried to identify these characters as accurately as possible, but sometimes that was tricky, because, well, their whole deal is that they don't have names. I'm sure you'll all get who we're talking about though. I'm the not-so-anonymous Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 best nameless video game protagonists. Number 10, The Immigration Inspector, Papers Please. Developed by former Naughty Dog employee Lucas Pope and released in 2013, Papers, Please! is a PC game that puts players in the shoes of an immigration inspector on the border of the fictional country of Arstotska. The nation is inspired by the countries of the former Eastern Bloc and faces rampant political instability. But of course, as a modern day Brit, I wouldn't know anything about that. The inspector is charged with checking people's papers to see if they can legally pass into the country. Not only must players deal with the issues faced by immigration staff every day, but they must also confront a mysterious organisation looking to bring disruption to Arstotska through bribery and deception. Papers Please received critical acclaim upon its release for its challenging story content and strong script writing. It was the recipient of many awards, including one at the 2014 BAFTAs. The decision to not name the immigration inspector was a really smart one, as players can imprint themselves onto the character. This makes the decisions they face even harder, as players find their own morality tested in the face of hard choices. Wow, that was a heavy entry. The rest of the list will be funnier, I promise. Number 9, The Demi Fiend, Shin Megami Tensei 3, Nocturne. Best known for being the series that inspired the Persona games, Shin Megami Tensei, or just Megami Tensei if you want to get Japanese about this, is a popular franchise in its own right. The first game in the series was released way back in 1987, with its most recent incarnation launching in 2021. The games all have their own unique stories, usually with themes of religion and the occult, and the one we're focusing on today is its third instalment. Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, which I am not saying in full again, was was released for the PS2 in 2003. Players take on the role of a high schooler who manages to get himself turned into a hellish creature called a demi-fiend after an apocalyptic event strikes Tokyo. Bloody students, always getting themselves into trouble, eh? The demi-fiend must use his newfound powers to battle against the evil cult responsible for the world-ending event. The character's personality changes depending on the player's actions, allowing for better immersion in the game and creating an experience that is easy to invest in. Plus, look at that body art. Clearly, he's one cool dude. Number 8, The Nameless One, Planescape Torment. Cult classic RPG Planescape Torment might have made approximately zero money, but it is still an absolute banger of a game. Since its release in 1999, the title has attained cult status and even received an enhanced version for the PS4 and Nintendo Switch in 2017. Right at the centre of the action of Planescape is the Nameless One, an immortal being with the ability to absorb other people's life forces to keep himself from dying. Think of him as a cross between the Doctor, Count Dracula, Oh, and those people at parties that drain your energy by spending hours talking about the data entry job. The game begins with the nameless one waking up on a stone slab, the only knowledge of his past life coming in the form of a tattoo on his back. I suppose there are worse things to find tattooed on you after waking up after a heavy night out. Over the course of the game, he learns more about his past through encounters with people who knew him in his previous life. These meetings then come full circle, as they also shape the future of the character. An intriguing and unique design, the Nameless One is a fantastic character, and one that, ironically, will be remembered for years to come. 
Number seven, the walker. Everybody's gone to the rapture. Waking up to find weird tattoos on your back is one thing, but waking up to find an entire village missing and weird lights all over the place? Well, that's the hangover to end all hangovers. Alas, this is exactly what happened to the protagonist of Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, the 2015 mystery adventure game developed by The Chinese Room. After waking up in a nearby observatory, the protagonist, who we've dubbed The Walker because the game is known as a walking sim, must discover what has happened to the residents of Yorton, all of whom have vanished off the face of the earth. Creepy in all the best ways, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture is a gripping game that manages to keep the player on edge the entire time they're playing. There isn't much to the character themselves, but that's what makes them so special. Because they're a blank slate, it's easy for players to assume the role of the walker. This puts them right in the centre of the action and at the mercy of this creepy experience. We highly recommend doing some yoga after you're done with this one. You're going to be very tense afterwards. Number 6, The Slayer of Demons, Demon Souls. Developed by From Software, Demon Souls is the first in the so-called Soul series that has been causing players to yank their hair out in frustration since 2009. Remade for the PS5 in 2020, the game is set in the Kingdom of Boletaria after it's been attacked by a vengeful demon called the Old One. To be honest, it's probably upset because everyone keeps calling it old. It's not very nice, is it? The player character is initially killed, nice one, but is revived by a much nicer spirit called the Maiden in Black, which sounds like Krista Berg's follow-up to Lady in Red. The Maiden gives the player a quest, destroy the demons that have conquered the land and place the old one back into its slumber. Surely that can't be too difficult. Old people notoriously love naps. The Slayer of Demons, as he is known, is a proper old-fashioned action hero. He's got a great look, a gnarly set of weapons and powers, and his tragic backstory makes him easy to get behind. Actually, you probably shouldn't get too attached to a character that's going to die every time you fail at the game, which will be a lot. Number 5, The Lone Wanderer, Fallout 3. Fun fact, this character was originally called Albert in the previews for Fallout 3. Albert sounds like a nice next door neighbour that your dad cuts grass for, not exactly suitable for a nuclear wasteland. The open world masterpiece that is Fallout 3 centres around the exploits of a character referred to as the Lone Wanderer. Raised in the safety of Vault 101, the Wanderer leaves his sanctuary to go and look for his father following his disappearance. Should have stayed in the vault, kid. That's what I would have done. The name The Lone Wanderer comes from Galaxy News radio DJ, Three Dog, who gives our hero the moniker after rescuing him. It's a great nickname, conjuring images of a badass cowboy fighting baddies from town to town. That's exactly what this character is, a nomadic gunslinger on a quest for justice who encounters his fair share of trials and tribulations along the way. As cool as it sounds though, we wouldn't recommend changing your legal name to Lone Wanderer. Imagine trying to explain that one to the people at the past spot office. Number 4, The Rookie, Halo 3 ODST. Released in 2009, Halo 3 ODST is a fantastic shooter that acts as a stopgap between Halo 3 and Halo Reach. It tells the story of a unit of Orbital Drop Shock Troopers, or ODSTs for short, who must complete a dangerous mission in the futuristic city of New Mombasa, taking on alien ultra baddies, the Covenant. Taking control of an unnamed rookie, players meet other members of the team who all have cool nicknames like Buck, Romeo, Dare and Mickey. Like the mouse. That's not exactly going to strike fear into the hearts of your enemies, is it? So often in war-based games, players take control of an experienced veteran only to accidentally shoot themselves in the leg whilst figuring out the controls. The rookie is just as inexperienced and afraid as the player, which makes for a much more cohesive story and gives other characters in the game a reason to have to explain the controls, world and plot. Also, it's clear that Bungie were running out of cool code names, so the player character would have probably been called Bungie Buttercup if he'd actually been given a name. Number 3, The Prince, The Prince of Persia series. This one could be considered a bit of a wild card entry because we're actually talking about multiple protagonists. Since the game first debuted back in 1989, there have been over a dozen more titles in the Prince of Persia franchise. Despite the changes in graphics, stories and consoles, one thing has remained constant over the years. The main character is known simply as the Prince. Actually, in some circles, he's just called Prince, but we wouldn't want to confuse him with the musician, so we're sticking with a definite article here. The last thing we'd want is a cease and desist from Paisley Park. Although it's not the same man in each game, different variations of the prince all share common traits like athleticism, heroism and those flowing locks. 
Oh, I do wonder what conditioner he uses. Fans of the series have their favourite version of The Prince, with the most common being the one in the rebooted Sands of Time trilogy. Regardless of which model of The Prince you prefer, we can all agree that he is one of gaming's most iconic heroes in any form, no matter how hard Jake Gyllenhaal tried to ruin his legacy. Number 2. The Hero of Oakvale – Fable We've made our thoughts about Peter Molyneux quite clear over the years, but credit where credit's due, his Fable series is one of fantasy gaming's most enduring franchises. The first game, released in 2004, gave players their first glimpse at the magical world of Albion and introduced us to the hero of our story. Oh, well, he's just called the Hero of Oakvale. Also known as Farm Boy, or just plain old boy, the hero has very humble beginnings in life, before a group of bandits attack his village, slaughter his father, and kidnap his mother and sister. Our protagonist then trains with the Guild of Heroes, building up the strength and skill to one day avenge his father's death and reclaim his lost family members. Fable embodies everything that is quintessential about fantasy fiction. Its main character is brave, resilient, and powerful, which is everything a hero should be. Having him serve this archetype whilst actually bearing its name, is a sublime piece of meta-commentary on the genre as a whole. Oh, they got pretty intellectual there, huh? Can the next entry be about some bloke with a gun blasting the heads of demons in space or something? Cheers! And number one, Doom Guy. Doom. Here's a hero so beloved that his fans invented a name for him. Now that's what I call popularity. Known in 1993's Doom as just a space marine, Doom Guy is the player's avatar for their blood-soaked battle against hordes of demons and possessed humans. Fans of the series owe countless hours of violent joy to this helmeted figure, a man who has bravely withstood wave after wave of monstrous attacks. Since then, the protagonist has picked up the affectionate nickname of Doom Guy and has become one of the most famous video game characters on the planet. He starred in several more Doom titles, including the 2016 reboot, and has appeared in other video games including Quake Champions, Duke Nukem 3D, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Whilst various novelizations and film adaptations have tried to ruin his mystique over the years, there is no way I'm ever calling him Flynn Taggart like in some of the books. The title of Doom Guy is now so legendary that there'd be an international outcry if his name was ever revealed officially. At your side, through thick and thin, Doom Guy is the perfect example of how you don't need to know a character's name to form a lifelong bond with them. 